I take a picture of this scene every day. And it's always interesting, the light and the mountain and the clouds. Starting the week on the tired side. So I think I'm gonna continue tapering my hours down, upping the intensity a little bit, not too much, but decreasing the volume. Let's see if I can get down to two hours a day. It's a strange thing to say. Uh, considering how I used to train in the past, but it's hard to not move my body all the time. So I think I'm going to do some gentle elliptical, then some gentle pulling. I'm working on a new type of pulling technique based on that of Simon Hegsted Kruger from Norway. Uh, and I've been trying to get his technique for a long time now, for years. And I'm getting closer and closer and finding little subtle shifts in body position. Anyway, that's it's going to be one of my focuses this week. Get the Kruger polling down. Time to go to recycling. It's time for my daily paraffin bath for my hand. And if you've never heard of a paraffin bath, which I hadn't either until I started going to occupational therapy. Oh my God, I love this thing. So it's basically a heating element with, I don't know how much, maybe two pounds or a kilo of paraffin. I got this at Goodwill for like $7 with the wax. And you can reuse the wax quite a bit as long as your hands are clean before going in. So you heat it up, it takes a few hours and it melts the wax and keeps the temperature at 130 degrees Fahrenheit. And basically what you do, you dip your hand in and it stings a little bit, but it's not dangerous. You pull it out, let it cool a little bit, put your hand back in, let it cool a little bit, put it back in, and let it cool a little bit. And you do this five times to build up a nice layer of wax. And I'm gonna dunk my thumb a few more times. Let that harden up a little bit. One more dunk. And what the heck. Another dunk. Do the whole hand. Let it harden up. Now I stick it in a plastic bag. Actually, let me put the lid on so I don't get the plastic bag in there. Put it inside of the plastic bag to fold the heat in. And then I put my thumb, which is really warm, and the wax is keeping the heat in. I put my thumb through a pretty aggressive range of motion, bending that top knuckle. Well, maybe I'll get some see-through plastic bags so you can see what I'm doing. But basically, I'm putting my finger right there and bending the knuckle around my finger, forcing it to bend and holding it there. And that is what the doctor told me to do. So this is uh, the prescribed remedy. And the wax and the plastic bag hold the heat in really nice. And just, you're warmed right to the bone. So it's a great way to work on an injury with tendons and bones, etc. And it's amazing how it reduces the pain as well. If I were to do this without the paraffin bath, it would hurt a lot more. And one more. All right, now I'm gonna go up. I'm gonna resist. Up, up, ooh, that hurts. Up, but again, it would hurt more without the warm up. Up, 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 okay. And you can leave this on as long as you want because it feels really nice, but I'm going to take it off because it's dinner time. And I can reuse the plastic bag as well. And basically you have this film of wax, which actually makes your skin feel really soft. When people talk about hydrating their skin, they're actually using the wrong term. Hydration means to uh, basically get wet with water, but water will dry your skin out. Wax, on the other hand, does not dry your skin out. It actually moisturizes it. 
So when you take this off, your skin feels much better. It's like a spa treatment. And I just put the wax right back in the tub. At a therapy office, they would leave this machine on 24 hours a day, but I turn it off when I'm done. And then I usually turn it on at noon, um, and it's usually molten by say 4 p.m. It doesn't use a ton of electricity because it's a really slow heating. But uh, that way, every evening before I go home for dinner, I can do some wax therapy and it's really good for your entire hand. It takes a little while to get the wax off, but uh, sometimes I can get it off in one pull like a glove, but tonight not so much because obviously my wax is camera shy. Anyway, that is what a paraffin bath looks like and I am totally hooked. You can get these things on eBay for maybe a hundred bucks but uh, I got really lucky and found one at Goodwill, and I'm super pumped. All right, I'm going home to dinner. I'll see you soon. What you doing, Mama? Waiting for someone to bring her chair in. Starting the day with a green smoothie that isn't green because of all the blueberries. Almond protein, blueberries, bananas, maple syrup, and kale. I like to do some kind of movement when I get to the studio to kind of get myself going. And I'm noticing as I'm feeling my body, like what kind of movement do I want to do, that I've got some stiffness and soreness here in my back and right here where my arm connects and also in my outer pecs. And I think it's from the toes to bar, which has me locked in this position. It's super, super intense. And I've been upping my intensity a bit as I've been lowering my training volume because I've got some races coming up and I want some top end intense stuff. Uh, I've been avoiding that forever, but because these races are coming and because I'm coming off such high volume, I wanted to see if I could get myself to decrease volume, increase intensity. And I have, but I'm feeling the effects today. Also, the pulling machine. I've been hitting it pretty hard with a new technique. Uh, I was pulling down like this, let me show you from the side, more like this, and kind of hollowing out here. And that doesn't really translate 100% to ski pulling on the trails. So what I'm doing instead is taking my rib cage up, keeping it up, not hollowing out, but keeping my rib cage up, and instead of pulling like this, I've got my arms closer here, and I'm doing this motion, which is pretty intense right up here, your upper back. So it doesn't hit the lats specifically like this motion does. So rib cage up, and a bam, 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 bam. If you watch biathlon races, they have a rifle on their back, so they tend to be more upright, and you see more of this boom, boom. Boom, instead of the which is what I'm used to, this more, uh, more of a follow through and compressing at the core. The biathletes, whose technique I'm starting to really, really like, rib cage up, pow, pow, pow. And that's harder to do. So that technique on the pulling machine plus the toes to bar has really kind of smoked me. So I'm gonna make the call, no upper body training today. I'll probably do some long elliptical sessions and Bigfoot light on my treadmill at home, which is really difficult to film because it's a cramped space in a dark room. Uh, I've got a treadmill desk over here, other side of that wall. Maybe I will set it up to film so I can show you what my Bigfoot light uh, at an incline looks like because uh, it's an awesome exercise. I love it. Anyway, no upper body training today. Give myself a break but maybe two, two and a half hours of leg stuff. All right, here we go. Off to pick up my dad at ukulele practice. He's got a, a group that he plays with at the senior center. So I'm gonna go grab him, take him home, and then move some wood. Day 
So every other day I drag wood from the barn here up to the house and on the other side of the house. So it's about 200 meters. And I use a sled. So it's, I don't know, maybe 150 pounds of wood. And somebody asked me if I got this idea from the knees over toes guy because I pull it backwards. And the answer is no, even though I do like his videos. My dad has been using this sled for years to get wood out of the forest. Um, we have a huge wood lot that goes back maybe a quarter of a mile. And my dad doesn't like machines. So even in his 80s, he uses this sled to drag wood out of the forest and down here to the barn. It just keeps him young, I guess. So I got the idea of dragging the sled with wood from my dad, but he doesn't do it backwards and he doesn't carry nearly as much. So uh, yeah, I've been dragging a sled for a very long time. Um, and backwards just felt better and it's a phenomenal workout. I love the burn. Um, what I have gotten from the knees over toes guy is Nordics and reverse Nordics, which is something that I do on occasion. I'd like to do those more often because they're just phenomenal exercises. Um, and I do think dragging a sled backwards is a great idea. So if you can find a way to do that, do it. So I'm pulling on dog leashes, which I got at Dollar Tree. So they're a buck 25 each. And I just hook them into the loops at the end of the sled and put my hands up and through. So you go up through and then down. So you're really kind of pulling with your wrist rather than your fingers. So it's not grip strength. It's basically your wrist that's doing the work of the pulling. So the effort is in your legs and in your scapula because I try to keep my scapula tight as I do it. It's easy at first, but after about 30 seconds, it just really starts to burn and get hard. And by the time I get to the house on the other side where I store the wood, it is just brutally painful. I love it. Fox in a box. <laughs> I got out the old running raw singlet to see what it would look like on me now that I'm quite a bit heavier and it looks kind of ridiculous. I would not wear this out in public anymore. <laughs> I decided not to do any polling today. I took yesterday off, which I haven't done in a while from upper body work and uh, did chin-ups today. 10 isn't my max, but it's not far away. Um, so those last few sets were pretty tough. So then I dropped down to five at the end so I could keep going, but uh, excited to get that many sets of 10. No snow in the valley, but I just checked and Prospect is open. They got three inches of snow last night. I'm going skiing. A little gray and sleety, but snow feels kind of firm. We'll see. It looks empty today. Ooh, I'm gonna have it all to myself again. The skiing is actually pretty good. It's not groomed, but it's kind of dense. So it's good for skating. And I'm gonna do some V2 technique work and film it. I've got some new thoughts about Simon Kruger's V2 and also Delphine Claudel from France. She's got a really nice dancey rhythm that 
she destroyed the final climb in the Tour de Ski, the Val de Fiamme, Fiamme. and uh, just watching her go up that alpine slope was amazing. So her rhythm is something that I've been thinking a lot about and combining that with Simon Kruger's leg drive. Uh, getting closer to something. Anyway, I'm going to film some of that and uh, snow's a little tricky, so it's not going to be easy. These are not great conditions to get an edge, but we'll see what I can do. Speaking of Val de Fiamme, it's an old poster from the World Cup in 91. Dave Spidell, he was at Middlebury. Todd Boonstra was at UVM. Adun Endestat. Jim Galanis uh, was at UVM. Nancy Fiddler. Uh, lots of uh, names from the past. Kind of neat. Never noticed that before. It's looking good for snow. I am right there in the bottom of Vermont, the southwest. Woodford is where the dark orange is, which is 12 to 18 inches. So the Woodford, Stanford, Glastonbury Plateau is going to get the most out of this storm, which is very exciting. We haven't had snow in quite a while down in the valley. We're supposed to get it for the next three days straight. Hopefully I can get up the mountain today to ski. Getting my oil changed, and apparently the owners have some connection to bobsledding, which is really interesting. 2009. My strength training volume this week has been significantly lower, but the intensity is dialed up. So it'll be interesting to see uh, how that relates to skiing speed coming up but I've already seen a difference in my body shape and size pretty quickly by dropping volume and increasing intensity. So very curious to see how it translates or if it translates to skiing. All right, time to go home. It's a little easier to pull the wood sled today. We got a couple inches of snow last night. Now I gotta go shovel the driveway out after getting some wood in. That's the thing when it snows, it uh, takes me an extra 45 minutes to two hours to leave, depending on how much snow we got. But I still love it. That's a great way to start the day. There's the blueberry orchard, one of our apple trees, another apple tree. And up there is the maple grove, more apple trees. And this is my sled full of wood. So much easier on the snow to drag it. It's a little bit disappointing. I just finished another listening session to Projection and Recollection in Jungian Psychology by Marie-Louise von Franz, I think. And there are some great gems, some profound nuggets of wisdom in this book and in Jung's work, but it's mostly a book about projection. Uh, the book itself is projecting. It's desperately searching for meaning. And that's unfortunate because there's some gold in here, but uh, it gets lost in the midst of just bizarre projection. Uh, anyway, yeah, I'm not going to recommend this one, uh, even though there's some nuggets of goodness in there. It was just really <gasps> far out. Okay. Time to go upstairs and discover what I'm going to do next. I don't know. I never know when I walk into the studio. I don't have a plan. I just walk in and let myself find, find a low energy state. So let's see what that looks like. It looks nice and wintry up on the mountain. Can't wait to get up there. feeling a little beat up from yesterday's polling workout, but I'm going to try some Simon Kruger V2 today. I've got a new arm thing that I'm doing, 
and uh, it's fast. We'll see. I don't know if I'll film or not. Uh, if I don't film today, I'll film it tomorrow. Show you what I'm working on. It's a sleepy Sunday morning. Last night I was up pretty late. It was game night with my family. We play a game that I made uh, last year, uh, which I hope to market at some point. Anyway, um, starting off very slowly today, being gentle, listening to George Orwell's essay, Why I Write, which uh, is interesting. Some, some very interesting insights in there. Anyway, it's short, it's like 24 minutes long. Uh, now I'm going to head upstairs. When you walk in the door, the elevator is always calling. And these stairs are very tall, 15-foot floors. But I like to take the stairs even when I'm tired. And I like to go up backwards because it's good for my Achilles. And it really burns. Knees over toes guy inspired me to do this one. And it's one of my favorite things to do now. At some point, I'll probably do this with a weight vest. Hard with these awkward bags in my hands. <laughs> great balance. Uh, I kind of do it bow-legged, uh, which makes it more like a ski motion. I'd love to turn this wall right here into a climbing wall. It's got to be, oh, it's got to be over 20 feet. How's the mountain look today? It looks dirty. <laughs> the parking lot is full yet again. It's gonna be busy skiing. This is my home away from home. Today's a bit of a smaller day for upper body because I'm just feeling tired. And the new polling technique based on Simon Kruger, that's what the K is for, is more difficult. So I can't do as much as I was doing in the past. Uh, the neutral pull-ups felt really good, but the polling, I gotta gradually build up using that new technique. And if I can, I am gonna be super fast. Anybody that's worked with me knows that I'm not a fan of narratives that add things up like it's been a long week or it's been a long day, but that's how my body is feeling. I'm going to be really careful not to tell a story about that, but I'm going to honor the fact that my body feels like it's done a lot. So we're going to continue the taper down. So for the past two weeks, I've been gradually decreasing my volume, but I've also been upping the intensity. So maybe the intensity is getting to me or maybe the volume is finally catching up or everything else that's going on in my life, which has become quite busy and complicated. But anyway, the taper will continue. And next weekend is the Craftsbury Ski Marathon, one of the biggest marathons in the East for skiing and uh, I'm nervous and excited to see how I do in a 25K, which is the distance for skate. Uh, so I'm gonna try to keep a gentle week with some more intensity, maybe in the middle, and then rest up a bit for the ski marathon. And we'll go from there. Anyway, I'm gonna head home and I will see you in the next one.